Hi everybody, so today we're looking at um, chemical bonding and VSCPR and this is going to be the um, the first of our bite-sized chemistry videos um, for this uh, topic. Okay, so this topic is fairly common in the Leaving Stars, coming up pretty much every year guaranteed. Um, not only does it come up in other questions such as your organic chemistry and so forth and some question fives even, um, it can also and generally does appear as a question 11, part A, B or C. And as you know, or you should know, uh, question 11 is divided up into three parts of which you must answer two. And quite often, the question 11 is really, really good to answer. So I'd always recommend students to look over that question 11, because often you're so concerned with answering the first eight questions there um, that you don't actually look at uh, question 10 or 11 which have options um, so I would definitely recommend that um, you look at that now starting off so the most common definitely the most common um, definition in chemistry um, for leaving cert anyhow is to define electronegativity so this is the relative attraction an atom in a molecule has for the shared pair of electrons in a single covalent bond you must get that word by word perfect Electronegativity really is at the heart of this chapter, so you have to know it. So, so important. Underneath it, I have it answered already because it's not really um, relevant um, so much to this chapter. It comes up in the trends in the periodic table, and that's got to do with um, increase in electronegativity values across the second period. Now, don't worry about if it's the second period, the first, the third or fourth period in the periodic table. It doesn't matter. The trend will always be the same going left to right. Uh, and the reason the electroneg electronegativity increases is because there's an increase in nuclear charge, i.e. there's um, more and more protons being added to the um, to nucleus. And secondly, there's a decreasing atomic radius. So there are two answers for that. So increasing nuclear charge, decreasing atomic radius. And the reason the atomic radius is decreasing simply is because the nuclear charge is increasing. Um, so let's get started with part three. And you're asked to use electronegativity values to determine, um, oh sorry, to predict the type of bonding in organic um, fluoride there. Now, OF2 here. So let's just write down O here and F here. Okay, so you're asked to figure out um, using electronegativity values there um, what the story is with that. Okay, so now you go to your pocket papers if you're using that app, um, or you go to your log tables. Um, it doesn't really matter, but you need to go to one of those to answer us. Okay, um, they should be the exact same. Pocket papers is a really neat app actually that you can use, and if you're using it, you'll see that oxygen should have a 3.5. Electronegativity value assigned to us, and fluorine should have a 4.0. Okay, so you might need a calculator for this one um, or for these ones, and um, you won't in this case here. Now, don't fall into the trap here, guys. Yes, there's two fluorines here, okay, but it's only a covalent bond is between per bond, okay, a single covalent bond. And there's two covalent bonds inside fluorine. So ignore the second fluorine. Just leave it at four. I see tons of students. And what they do is they multiply um, the electron electronegativity value here by two. To get the two fluorines or whatever um, they're using. Often it's um, H2O actually. And they multiply hydrogen twice. So don't fall into that trap. Now, get the difference. So in this case here it's going to be four minus 3.5. So therefore it's going to be... 0.5. Now, we have a scale, and if it's 0 to 0 0.4, it's nonpolar. If it's 0 0.41, we'll say it doesn't really matter, to um, 1.7, it's polar. And if it's greater than 1.7, it's ionic. Okay. Now, we have a value of 0 0.5, so in that case here, it's in the polar um, area. Now, technically, if we're going to describe it, it should be slightly polar. So our answer, I'll write it down here, is slightly polar. Now, if you didn't have the word slightly in it, you actually got full marks. A 
as long as you mentioned polar. Okay, um, but I think it's better to say slightly polar because if we're looking at it there, there's actually a big difference between 0 0.5 and 1.7. So obviously the closer it gets to 1.7, the more and more polar it is. And because it's so close to the non-polar side, I'm just going to use uh, my answer slightly polar. But again, if you just wrote down polar in your exam, perfectly fine, you'll get your full marks. Okay, next is... Part IV, state and account for the shape of the OF2 molecule. Okay. What I'm going to do here now is I'm going to get rid of this because we actually don't need this anymore. Pop that up here. So IV, state and account for the shape. Now, always carry this out the same way um, for all of these, no matter what we're dealing with, OF2. So you find out what your central atom is. In this case here, it's going to be oxygen, okay? Because oxygen is on its own. Generally, if it's on its own, it's going to be the central atom. So put an oxygen here. Okay, now ask yourself this. How many electrons does oxygen have in its outermost orbit? So you have to, basically what you have to do there now is you have to check your periodic tables and you're gonna to have to see um, what the story is with oxygen. Okay, so if we're going to our electron uh, to our periodic tables, I should say, you'll see there that oxygen has um six. It's in group six, so therefore it has six electrons in its outermost orbit. We only care about the outermost orbit now, guys. So fluorine is there anyhow, so I could put fluorine here. So we'll do one here, one here, and we'll do a bond with fluorine. And we'll do a bond over here with fluorine. And look, we'll do X's for that. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sharing the one there. That's grand. Okay. Now, don't forget, oxygen has two more electrons. So this is the only time I'm going to do it this way now, guys. I forgot the way I want to do it straight to the answer. One, um, and we call these the lone pairs. So, oxygen has six electrons in total in its outer orbit. So, it has one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, we know lone pairs are going to push the fluorines closer to one another. Okay, and the reason being, I'm actually going to rub it out all together. Well, actually, I can change that. The reason being for that, guys, is simply because um, they're more, um, they're highly electron dense. So I'm trying to say. So what we'll do is we'll have the fluorines at an angle. And you should remember it as oh, let me see how to rub that out. You should um, remember it vaguely as something resembling water. Okay. So we have our oxygens and we have our fluorines. It's no harm in this to be drawing out all the electrons. In fact, you should be drawing out all the electrons. Okay, so that's what our shape looks like. Now, it says to state and account for the shape of OF2. Okay, so the shape, if we're naming it, is going to be phi shape. And you always do this for any um, accounting for us. Okay, you just write down over here, lone pairs, bonds. So it has, if we're looking at it, it has two bonds, brand, and it has how many pairs lone, how many lone pairs two we're looking at it so two lone pairs and two bonds okay so that's what you do you just put down um that and that's your um that is your answer okay and um, for your accounting for um the shape the p shape two lone pairs and two bonds okay now let's move on to v again these just take practice we'll be doing loads of these um, if we're looking at it, select, given your reasons, which are the most angles probably good to be for the oxygen difluoride? Well, if we're looking at it there, okay, it can't be 180, because 180 would indicate that it was linear, okay, so that's no good. Um, 109.5, that's, there's only one that we learn off for that, and that's tetrahedral, so that's no good. 120, okay, that means, um, the, it can't be 120 because, and the bond pairs will be um, closer to one another. Um, 
So therefore, the only one we could have is 120, by the way, everybody, is only for um, atoms that are in um, a trigonal planar. So therefore, um, 103 is our most likely answer. And again, all you do is you write down over here, 103 degrees, oh, 103 degrees, and you say why, okay, and all you have to do is say two lone pairs, so you're actually repeating yourself for this one, and two bonds. That's your reason um, for that angle there. Um, and that was it. That's all, that's all you needed um, to say. Um, you didn't really need to say anything else. So bond pairs, if you want to say that, I don't really mind. Okay, let's move on to 2019 question four, so guys. And you're asked to give two differences between sigma and pi covalent bonds. Well, you learned this off. Okay, that's, that's it and be done with this. Okay, sigma is head-on overlap of two orbitals. And pi is a sideway overlap of p orbitals. There actually is two differences there. The first difference is the head-on and the sideways overlap. The second difference is two orbitals over here or p orbitals over here. Okay, so there is two differences for that. Learners off, guys, um, you can use those as your definitions as well. Okay, um, that's it. Okay, last one, so, and we'll give it a break, is 2018 question 11a. Now, both carbon and disulfide and tetrachloromethane are colourless liquids, grand, okay, uh, at room temperature. First one's to define electronegativity. Well, we've seen that one the year before. That's grand, okay, so we, we have that one answered. Again, I can't stress that one enough. You have to learn it off. Next is predict the type of bond formed between carbon and chlorine atoms and CCL4. Okay, so CCL4. So carbon is the um, central atom because it's on its own. Carbon has a valency of four, that means there's, it has four electrons in its outer um, orbit. Okay, next, if we're looking at it, it has four electrons and it also has four um, chlorines. So each one of those electrons is going to bond. Now, I know automatically as soon as I see this, I'm actually just going to do dots there now, we're going to have something called a wedge um, and um, dash um, scenario here, guys. That's what it looks like. And then you just put in your chlorines here. Okay. Um, and again, you can put your X's in. So one, two, three. Chlorine is in group seven. So uh, seven electrons in the outer orbit. One, two, three, four, five, six. One more. Grand. Okay, so that's our chlorine there. And again, draw it as big as possible. That's really, that's actually nearly too small. Um, it says, predict the type of bond formed between carbon and, uh, oh, I didn't even read the question today, if we're looking at it there. It says, predict the type of bond formed between carbon and chlorine. Well, if we're looking at the type of bond, we're really going to have to look at your carbon and your chlorine uh, electronegativity values. Ah, uh, not to worry. This is the importance of going back and rereading the question, guys, so you can see if you're going um, right or wrong. So look, carbon is 2.5, and chlorine is, I think it's a little bit more, is 3, isn't it? Yeah. So our difference between those is going to be um, 3 minus 2.5 equals 0 0.5. So our answer there is slightly polar and you have to learn off that um that table that's all you have to do 0 to 0 0.4 is um non-polar 0 0.4 0 0.41 to 1.7 is polar um and then anything greater than 1.7 is your ionic okay slightly polar grand um, what is the valency of carbon in tetrachloromethane? Well, we answered it already for part three there. So part three, it's a four. Okay, it's in group four. Um, and then IV, part 
free. Okay, come on now, move on. So, um, just to keep things consistent there. Um, so for part IV, okay, state and account for the shape of the chloro, um, tetrachloromethane. Well, I look, I have it already done over here, um, by accident, but nonetheless, we'll pop it down over here. Same scenario here, guys. Okay, um, for this, uh, for drawing us, um, you can see there straight away it has to be tetrahedral. Tetrahedral, you write in your bond pairs. Or bonds, it doesn't really matter. And your lone pairs. And you write down zero lone pairs, four bond pairs. And that's this. You're done. Okay? Um, I, or V, I should say. Draw a dot and cross diagram to show the arrangement of the valent shell electrons in um, a carbon um, disulfide uh, molecule. Okay. So CS2 um, for this one here. And this is part um, five now we're dealing with. Okay. Um, carbon's a central atom because it's on its own, one carbon. Carbon, we know, has four electrons in its outer or orbit, so therefore four and wants four more because of the octet rule. Sulfur, though. Let's see what group sulfur is in. And if we're looking at it there, um, for sulfur, if you Checking it there, you see it's on the second period there, third period, I should say. So it's underneath oxygen, so it has six electrons in its outer orbit. Okay, so therefore it wants um, two more electrons. So each sulfur atom wants two electrons. So we write it down like this. So there's our sulfur there. Carbon has four, which I have here. One, two, three, four. And when it bonds, it does two double bonds, it gets eight. That makes sense because, again, they all want to get up to eight. And sulfur has six there already. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and if we count up the sulfurs, six plus two is eight. Six plus two is eight. Okay. Uh, in this case here, it's going to be linear because all double bonds are linear. Same for triple bonds too. So linear shape. Okay. Um, if you did do a single bond, you should have realized fairly quickly that you had a lone pair present and you also should have realized that the sulfurs did not um, have eight um did not have eight electrons being shared around. Okay, so that's no good. Okay. Um, so that's our, that's your answer there for that one there, okay? So all you needed to say there was, draw. all you do is draw a down cross diagram to show us, and that was it. Um, so look guys, we've done a good bit there um, with 2018 and also 2019, um, and the next video is going to go through um, some of the other years as well, okay?